To get our high-level language source code to run, we don't have to compile it. We can actually take another very different approach called interpretation. Whereas a compiler is a program which reads your source code and translates it into another form of code, machine code, an interpreter is a program which reads code and translates it into action. That is to say, an interpreter reads code and as it reads it, it does what the code says to do. Admittedly, the choice of terms here is not apt because an interpreter in normal life refers to someone who translates one language into another. But that's what a compiler does. A compiler is like C-3PO. An interpreter in programming is not like C-3PO. It reads code and immediately does what it says. It's more like an action hero. It's like John McClane. So for instance, say we write Hello World. Well, to run that program, we don't produce any output files which are then executables. We actually just run an interpreter program directly on the source file, and that is the same as running our program. If we've written our code in multiple source files, well, we just run them all through the interpreter, and the interpreter handles any business of linking. In effect, the linking is done each time you run the program. It might seem mysterious how interpreters could possibly work, so imagine the simplified kind of interpretation. Imagine we write a program which reads through a text file and evaluates the mathematical expression on each line, and simply then displays for a moment the value produced by that expression. So if we run our program on the file consisting of these three lines, first it's going to display the value 93, then negative 7, and then 16. To make this into a programming language, we just need to start adding features, and we'd start, say, by adding variables. So the value produced in one line can be used in later lines. Next you would add control flow, you would add some equivalent of if and while. And then finally, you would add the ability to define and invoke functions. Once you have those four things, expressions, variables, control flow, and functions, well, you have a programming language. Yet another way to get our source code to run is to combine the approaches of compilation and interpretation and use them together. For instance, with the Java language, you first run your source code through a compiler, which spits out an intermediate form of code, which Java calls bytecode. And this code is then loaded and executed by the interpreter, which in Java is typically called the virtual machine. Java bytecode actually looks very much like machine code. It's just that it's machine code for an instruction set that doesn't exist. No CPU recognizes it. The thinking behind this hybrid approach is that it gives you most of the advantages of compilation and interpretation at the same time. On the one hand, compiled code tends to run faster because one, you're not doing the business of reading the source code when you run your program, and the compiler can do all sorts of optimizations if it's running ahead of time. But when we use an interpreter, we have the advantage that we don't have to compile our code for every platform we want to run on. In this hybrid approach, we only have to compile our source code once into bytecode, and then the same bytecode files will work on any machine that has a working Java virtual machine. So basically, we compile for efficiency, and we interpret for portability. Uh, those at least are the most common arguments made for the virtues of interpretation versus compilation, though I will say that the real story is much less clear-cut. The story gets even more complicated because in some languages like Java, the popular virtual machines have introduced a feature called JIT, which stands for just-in-time compilation. The idea in JIT is that the interpreter, the virtual machine, may make the choice at certain points to, instead of interpreting code, to actually compile it into native code, into machine code, and then having the CPU run that code directly. In other words, the VM produces machine code, it then jumps execution to that machine code, and at the end of that machine code, execution jumps back to the interpreter. The thinking behind this approach is that although you're introducing overhead in that the VM is spending time compiling code each time the program is run, there are many cases where it's worth it, and in fact, by delaying compilation until the program is actually run, the VM can make intelligent decisions about how to optimize that code in a way that the compiler, which runs before the program is run at all, simply can't because the VM is there with the running program, it has more information. For instance, there may be a trade-off in optimizing for space uh, memory usage and optimizing for execution time 
the VM may have a better idea of which is the appropriate trade-off to make. So the argument is sometimes made, it is possible for code running on a VM with a just-in-time compiler to actually exceed the performance of code that's compiled into machine code ahead of time. How often, or if at all, this plays out in reality is something that's highly debated.